Uh, Brady, I don't know if any of you guys have met Brady Berman. Uh, he actually has a proven track record as an entrepreneur. Wait your turn. Uh, all right, you can come up. Uh, but he's uh, done all sorts of stuff, um, building all these te uh, technology businesses that uh, focus on client success, innovation. Uh, you wouldn't know it to look at him, but uh, he helps organizations of all sizes just adapt to the, you know, the technology's changing and all the different things that are evolving. Welcome the co-founder, or I'm sorry, founding partner and CEO of Punch Out To Go, one of our gold sponsors, Brady Berman. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Test, test, test. You guys hear me okay? All right, thank you. All right, how are we doing? Good. B2B conference? If you're here for a B2B conference, stand up. <laughs> if you're here for a B2B conference, stand up. <laughs> if you're here for a B2B conference, stand up. <laughs> I must be at the wrong place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is, I'm the last one. You only got to put up with me for, I don't know, three hours. It's going to be worth every minute. All right, everybody standing up. That's nice. Everybody put your right foot out. Put your right foot in and just shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey. You turn yourself around and that's what it's all about. Right, you all feel a little better? You don't look really excited. I'm going to get you excited soon. All right, learning a lot, right? Um, I've taken a couple notes. Uh, I feel very honored to be here with you today. We've traveled from the long distant area of uh, Virginia this morning, brought some uh, team members who have probably handed one of these to each one of you, right? Everybody got one? If you don't, please put your hand up. We'll get it over to you. <clears throat> so there's a, a couple of trends that I think that we're all noticing. You have a couple of different distinct channels. You have your direct-to-consumer, perhaps. You have your direct B2B, right? Just to kind of common B2B, you know, organizations that find a part, need it, no real relationship. And now you have your relationship-driven B2B channel, right? The relationship-driven B2B channel becomes more complex. You may need to have approvals and different mechanisms on your e-commerce application that provide the means for the end users within an organization to add items to the cart, but ultimately have a layer of approval, right? And then there's another one. There's this e-procurement channel. Have any of you heard of e-procurement? See a couple of heads shaking. E-procurement happens all around us. It's really wild. Every plate in this building actually came through our system. We didn't sell it. We just worked for the company that sells to all the Hiltons. Hilton, for instance, uses a platform called Birch Street. When they want to purchase goods and services, they use Birch Street, Hilton, all the brands use it. And the same thing holds true in, in really any organization. So the e-procurement sector is a massive opportunity for you, and I want to educate you on it now, all right? Everybody feeling better? We need to do a hokey pokey again? <laughs> so the fastest growing B2B channel is e-procurement. 37% growth per year. It's insane. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. Our agenda is going to be, if you can keep up with me walking back and forth, I apologize. Our agenda is, uh, what is e-procurement? The e-procurement market overview how distrib distributors sell within procurement, what is Punch-Out? It's not a video game. Uh, Punch-Out to go overview, uh, a live action kind of demonstration. It's not really gonna be live. I got some screenshots to show you though. Uh, and then we'll have some Q&A, right? And then we'll be closer to cocktail hour. Sound good? All right. So let's start off with, you know, what is e-procurement? I gave you a little scenario of, of the Hilton. Uh, so e-procurement systems are widely leveraged by organizations around the world. These e-procurement systems provide a great means for organizations to automate the procure-to-pay process, increase visibility into the organization's spend, increase contract compliance, connect and drive spend to preferred suppliers, achieve proper approvals, blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, transacting with the suppliers that are, are allowed to be transacted with across an organization. I'm not here to sell you on an e-procurement system at all. I'm not here to sell you on anything. I'm trying to educate you, help you understand why these platforms are used, why they exist, and why more organizations around the world are using these systems. So if we look at the landscape 10 years ago, so actually, let me back up a little bit. 20 years ago, when I was seven years old, <laughs> I started a web development and marketing company that built a lot of commerce applications for B2C and B2B. It's, I've been deeply entrenched uh, since I was seven. Uh, 10 years ago, when I was 17, 
Um, one of our customers was a small hardware company in, in Richmond, Virginia. Their largest customer was the state of Virginia. The state of Virginia told this customer, or told our customer, a company called Harper Hardware, um, you either need to be able to integrate with our e-procurement system, which is called Ariba, or we're not gonna be able to do business with you. We're gonna go to Granger or somebody else. We value the relationship with you, but you have to do this. So we went out and did this integration for them and lost our butts. I was talking to somebody else about, you gotta lose your butt sometime to, to get ahead in life. Um, did the integration, it took us about six months, it was brutal. Uh, and I like things that are brutal, right? So I, I continued to do more brutal integrations. But back then, all we really had was like Ariba and Oracle, which is uh, iProcurement is what the procurement component's called. Everybody knows SAP. The actual procurement component's called SRM, Supplier Relationship Manager. PeopleSoft, Oracle product, and then comes along like Coupa and Jagger. There are literally hundreds of e-procurement systems being used around the world today. Now, we're supporting organizations in 45 countries uh, and, and have connected, I think, to 100 and close to 160 different e-procurement systems. What's really important about this, this slide here uh, is based upon the customers that you're selling to, some of these providers that you see on this, on this plethora of NASCAR slide deck of evolution of e-procurement systems, many of them are niche providers. Like I mentioned, Birch Street, I'm not even sure if they're on there, focuses on hospitality. Jagger, it was formerly called SideQuest, focused on higher education. ESM used to be called eSchool Mall, focused on K-12. So what's happening is that more and more, more and more procurement systems are coming to market, usually in niche-focused areas, right? Because in business, it's usually nice to be able to be in some form of a niche, right? But then they get bigger, and they broaden their horizons, and they change their name. But these are very important things to think about. So if one of your customers says, hey, we have this Ariba thing, oh, I know what that is. That goofball up at that B2B conference told me all about it, right? If somebody mentions Jagger, well, now you know it's probably you know, higher ed. Maybe it's you know, the Ohio State or whatever the case may be. A lot of e-procurement systems out there and they're growing rapidly. Um, we see new e-procurement systems, it feels like daily. Uh, so the B2B e-procurement market overview, so actually related to procurement. So 50% of companies already leverage some form of procurement system. They may not leverage it well, but they're getting there. It's starting to get better. 33% plan to implement e-procurement technologies. It's happened again all around us. Uh, nobody really knows about it, but it's about understanding your customers, right? This is just another channel, right? You have your direct B2B, you have your maybe targeted Facebook social media campaigns for your direct customers, and now you have this other channel of e-procurement, right? And it's a very important one to pay attention to because it's only growing. Right, the B2B train has left the station was a cool thing I heard the other day. It's a pretty good one if you think about it, right? So the time is now to start understanding this landscape, right? So these, I try to put a lot of words up here because I feel like that maybe confuses people more and makes me look a little better, but I'm just playing. Um, so the most useful features are these is customized product and price of display. So these e-procurement systems are glorified marketplaces for an organization, right? They'll load product data into these e-procurement systems. They'll be able to access vendors through various means, but we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, do all the kind of sourcing and compliance, all the cool stuff. Have you guys ever provided like an Excel sheet to your customers for them to load into their... I got one laughing over here. It's fun, right? Yeah. So that's just one of the things. So, and, and, and make a note of that. The, the customers today that you are providing those Excel sheets of data to, so write those down because those become your first targets. Um, but ultimately, the e procurement market is going to be growing. We all know this number. Actually, I see it was nine trillion this morning, ten trillion, six trillion, two trillion, three trillion, uh, six point seven trillion by Frost and Sutherland. Whatever, it's growing way faster than B two C, right? And it's a great opportunity. I was talking to this gentleman earlier. If you think about B two B and B two C, right? B two C ten year, or twenty years ago, again when I was seven was a different world, right? But today you're facing the same challenges. You're facing the same challenges that, you've, that, that organizations faced 20 years ago in a different environment, right? B2B is a much more complex space, many more channels. Uh, but the market's gonna continue to grow, so I won't give you these silly, crazy numbers. So, <clears throat> these marketplaces, again, I'm gonna show you an example of one here in a minute. 
Uh, there's two general ways that you as a distributor or a seller in our world, we call it, can provide your customers with products. Hosted catalogs, these are your Excel sheets. Uh, Ariba is one of the larger players, so they, and they call their hosted catalogs CIF catalogs, C-I-F. Anybody ever heard of one of those? Again, they're not fun. So these are, again, kind of static files, nothing real time about it. You're here to do more with your B2B commerce application. Static files do nothing for you. Uh, they do provide some value to your customers because it gets your products in their marketplace, right? And sometimes you do a little bit of both of kind of host it and punch outs. Um, but the static file business is not a fun business, and most organizations are getting away from that because it's, it's a dependency on them to manage the content as well as you, and it's not an enriched experience, right? It's, you may have all this beautiful data, right? We've talked about enrichment of data, right? Utilizing your data, automating with PIMS, and all this cool stuff, right? And then you go do a hosted catalog, and it's five columns of data, and then they strip out two of them, and they're left with garbage, right? It's not a good experience. So with punch-out catalogs, punch-out catalogs uh, allow these organizations that are leveraging these e-procurement systems like Ariba and Coupa to access your actual e-commerce application. They become, on single click within, an within these procurement systems, they get authenticated from that system directly into your e-commerce system, right? So now if you have Chloris, right? If you have all that real-timeness of inventory and pricing, availability, offering, the whole nine yards, it's no longer a static process, it's a living, breathing commerce component that's now entrenched within your buyer's e-procurement system, right? It has that dynamic, the real-timeness of things, the ability to have configurable types of products. You may have specific types of bundles you provide to some of your customers. Uh, and then you have your other abilities like upselling and cross-selling and uh, you know, all the great things that you have. Again, talking about the enrichment of data, the MSDS files, the user guides, all the relevant information, all the things that you guys are working really hard to do to differentiate yourselves from competitors, you can make that available to your customers through these procurement channels. With a hosted catalog, again, it's, it's aggregating product data from all types of different approved vendors within a procurement world, and it becomes this very static, terrible looking situation. Where with Punch-Out, it's, it's them actually authenticating and using your e-commerce application that you are investing in, right? And this is just, again, another little channel that you need to be aware of. So the actual Punch-Out process I talked about a moment ago. Again, the users logs into the procurement system, right? They can access vendors through various ways in different procurement systems, but ultimately you end up with some real estate I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. On single click, the user gets authenticated again into your e-commerce application. You probably have customers that get different pricing and offering, right? I think Tom, you mentioned you have 1,000 products. You're gonna add maybe 10,000 more or something. You probably have different customers that may only purchase 300 products at these particular prices. Another customer purchases 2,700 products, right? So using your e-commerce infrastructure, again, if you have those real-time hooks, with Chloris or whatever your integration is between your ERP and your commerce application, which is a no-brainer, by the way. That looks really cool. He didn't pay me to say that. Um, use it, right? But ultimately, the user gets to the e-commerce application. They're building a cart. They're doing cool stuff. They're doing a live chat. I can't find this product. I think that was you earlier, right? I'll show you something in a minute. They, you know, they're building a cart. They're doing whatever they got to do. They're looking at their order history. They're picking up a quote. Y'all have to have quotes. Tom? Put that on your roadmap. You gotta get quotes up there. Uh, quoting is a big, big thing because you wanna utilize the commerce experience, drive sales through commerce. Doesn't have to be outside of the world. Ultimately, they add items to their cart, right? Once they get to the shopping cart page, they're not proceeding through a normal checkout. They're gonna abandon the cart. Crazy, right? They're gonna transfer that cart back into their procurement system, right? Goes back as a requisition. Once it gets approved, that's when a purchase order gets sent. Right Now you got the deal, you go do the work, you get paid, everybody's happy. Automated, right? How many of you are getting orders with junk SKUs? You ever get orders, junk SKUs? Just one? Are you the only one getting orders? 
enrichment of data, utilizing the data, right? No more junk orders. We all like orders, right? But if you get an order with a junk SKU for $65 and it costs your company $65 to process an order, well, you haven't really yielded anything, right? So enrichment of data. All right, so enhancing business value. So punch out gives you access to uh, your customers access to the latest products and product information from your catalog. Uh, take advantage of contract compliant pricing, order or build those configurable products, right? We have, I was telling somebody, we have a customer that has 60 sextillion products. I forgot how many zeros, it's a lot. Uh, I don't know. And anyway, it's like the hardest products to configure. It's nuts and bolts and it shouldn't be that hard, I wouldn't think, but it's, I guess it's pretty hard. But it, you know, you have to be a major engineer. But ultimately, these configurable elements are very important to many of your businesses. Uh, easily, again, kind of create those requisitions and streamline the purchasing, right? How are we streamlining the purchasing? We got good data, right? You're getting orders with good data because they derive from your commerce experience in real time. Uh, drive purchasing compliance and control spending across your organization, across their organization. It's a win for you as well because again, you're getting good data. You're getting orders. All right, this is on that uh, document, so I'll, I'll spare you this, uh, keep that. So. Again, when I was 17 years old, we did our first punch out integration. Uh, we realized there needed to be an easier way, right? We came up with this far fetched idea that today is supporting tens of thousands of integration points around the world of this adaptable technology, this kind of PayPal of the B2B e procurement space, this solution that could be leveraged by companies of all types using any type of infrastructure they want. Uh, we're very much agnostic, right? So. That's how we go to market. We're able to work with Sachin at Big Commerce, right? DC Cap with any of the platforms they're using. And this is important because commerce is an evolutionary process, right? What you can afford today or can do today may be vastly different a year or two or three down the road. Continuity is a big important piece of what we do at Punch Out to Go by being able to support our customers and bring value to helping them leverage whatever best in breed commerce technologies they have, right, or they're, they're leveraging. Um, this is our NASCAR slide deck, and it's not a bragging deck. Uh, the sheer volume of the nuances that you guys have, imagine the nuances that all these other companies have, just crazy nuances. And many of these companies are at the elementary stage of understanding this e-procurement space as well. But again, it's the fastest growing B2B channel that there is, this e-procurement space. Every company has their own different commerce technologies, right? So Lowe's is a homegrown system moving to a hybrid web sphere model, and um, AutoZone's, I think, Oracle something, and Worth is Magento, and you know, there's some big commerce up there. There's all types of stuff. Again, helping companies leverage whatever they want. These integrations aren't easy. Has anybody ever done an EDI integration? You want to do more, right? Yeah. What if you only had to do one more? That'd be pretty cool, right? So that's what I, this, this landscape that we work in, it's very complex. So a lot of different e-procurement systems that I mentioned, I think 150 or 60 that we connect to today. They all use standards, right? EDI is a standard, CXML, another standard buzzword. They all use them unstandardized. And what's worse is each system that supports that standard of CXML and enforces that standard the actual buying organization on those procurement system has their own unique requirements, right? So you end up with a lot of kind of bespoke integrations. Uh, and this diagram doesn't, it, it gets purely chaotic. But we can come in and we paint this pretty picture and we deliver on the ability that we can connect your commerce technologies, right? Your commerce technologies, me and your big commerce, your Magento, whatever you're using, right? To your customers on any procurement system, no matter what it may be. Uh, and then we do that very well. We actually never lost a customer. I'm pretty excited about that. It's because I talk to death, talk them to death. I'm just kidding. So benefits of e-procurement, I think and this is a really important, is for your customers, it's enhancing the shopping experience, it's streamlining the order process, reducing the cycle times, lowering procurement cost, increasing order accuracy, invoicing automation, all these cool things, right? You want to do the same, so that's a win for you as well. You're gonna expand your sales reach, I guarantee it, or I'll buy you a beer if I'm wrong, or two, or a drink. Uh, product and pricing availability, it's a very sticky channel. 
in all these years of doing these integrations since we were, since I was 17, I, I could probably count on two hands how many integrations got turned off. And it was probably due to some type of acquisition or something. It's a very sticky channel. Uh, once you're in there, you're, you're, you're pretty much in there unless you can really screw it up. And it's a relationship channel, right? I, I always say it's a good old boy or good old girl network, right? It, it really is. It's the relationships are really important. All right, so I was going to do a live demo, but I didn't have the ability, so I, I grabbed some screenshots. So um, this is a procurement system called Coupa. They're probably the fastest growing procurement system on the market. It's used by like, I don't know, Tesla, who's going commerce, or Tesla's or Salesforce's, uh, or VCA Animal Hospitals, or all across the map, Airbus, whatever. Um, so this is VCA. VCA is a large animal hospital group. I think they have 800 locations in North America. Um, they bought Coupa, and they actually, just like we kind of do for suppliers, we do for buyers as well. So they bought Coupa, and they put punch out to go between Coupa and all of their key vendors. I think 94% of their spend is going through our technology. So of those 800 locations, when any time anybody needs to buy anything, they must go to Coupa. They can't just get in their car and go to Lowe's and go to Staples. They, they have to use these systems. That's the way it works. So. What do we see here? It's, it's, it's a marketplace. It's, it's their internal purchasing engine. This is, these procurement systems are, are, are bolt-ons to larger ERPs, like an SAP ERP or uh, Oracle, whatever the case may be. In this case, they're homegrown. But ultimately, it's a bolt-on. And it just does a better job of everything vendor-related. You are a vendor, distributor, seller, right? I don't, sorry to screw up the words here. Uh, it's, it's amazing. You go to certain places and you guys say VARs and this things and you know everybody's in a different world. But I think you guys are all distributors, but in our world you're sellers, you're the vendor, right? So within these procurement systems, the end user, if they want to buy anything, they have to go through here. So it says, what do you need? It's pretty cool. Good little opening, right? So I need gloves. Well, that's cool. So all this is fed, what you're seeing here, in this internal marketplace by hosted catalog files. This is not the experience, right? It's not the e-commerce experience. Um, there's often a, a very healthy mix of hosted catalogs and these kind of punch-out catalogs. But what we see here is this, right? So can anybody point out anything that's wrong? Like, or like that's not like today's world of commerce. Like, did anybody see anything silly about this experience? I'll give you a hint size. Right, like there's no configurable elements, right? It's antiquated. There's, maybe there needs to be an MSDS on this or a user guide. Here's how you put the glove on. I don't know. It can't exist, right? So with punch out, over here on the right hand side, we have shop online. These are their punch out vendors. These are the vendors that they use punch out with. Again, on single click, an end user can access any one of these vendors through punch out. So, I am gonna magically select CDW. Boom. That's cool, right? What's that? Let me do it again. Boom. All right. So now we are authenticated into the CDW application. There's my guy. That's my account manager. Hey, Glenn, I got a question for you, right? So now I, you'll see that they have quotes. Again, really important. Uh, or I can shop, right? So, you know, HP workstation. It's not configurable, but that's okay. What do we have here? We don't have that static look. We don't have that cheesy whatever. And we got Glenn down here on the left-hand corner saying, hey, I'm here to help you, right? Your chat. CDW, the Grangers, right? I think you heard the statistic earlier. Who was it that said the 80% or something? Was that? Gra These companies have just crushed this e-procurement space. It's been a, a huge channel for them, right? And it's... And that's why they come up with that number. And it's a different type of dynamic, right? Same thing like with the Thermo Fisher, or some of these other kind of marketplace types of concepts. They, they go after these procurement channels. It's, it's not a reactive channel. Like if I talk earlier, remember about my hardware company in Richmond, Virginia, they were reactive, right? We're finding more companies now starting to get more proactive, right? So these companies like this have been very much proactive, which is why they've seen so much growth in B2B, right? And same thing that Amazon is trying to do. But ultimately, we're on this e-commerce site. It's a much more enriched experience. Underneath, there's way more pictures. We're not limited to one picture. Somebody else talked about it. get good pictures on your website. It's obviously very important. 
Um, don't use the cookie cutter product data you have, enrich the product data, but it creates a good experience and then you can have the little, you know, the HP expert guy there to talk to. I think his name was Glenn, I don't know. Uh, but ultimately we can add the item to our cart. And again, what, the biggest difference is, is that we're not proceeding through a normal checkout, right? What are we gonna do? Anybody remember? We're gonna carry that shopping cart back over to the procurement system, right? Why is that? We gotta take it through approvals, right? So now we've transferred it back, just like that, bam. I didn't even have to click, I just thought about it, it was like my Alexa, hey Alexa, flip the page. Um, but now, so we plugged in, you know, we're, so all the ship twos, right, 800 locations I mentioned, they all live in the procurement system. This is now, and it's, it seems weird because the users now added items to the cart, they brought it back, now they're gonna tell you where they want it, which seems weird, right, but this is how the process works. So I've decided I wanna send it to Cincinnati, Ohio, um, I can look at this beautiful data, right? It's not junk data, it's clean data. Um, and then ultimately I can submit it for approval. Now I can also go and shop from other vendors as well. I can go and punch out the staples and <clears throat> add some staples. I can go punch out the air gas and add some helium for tonight's party or whatever the case may be. Um, but ultimately I could submit it for approval, right? Which will send the purchase orders out to the various vendors for them to be able to then fulfill, right, and buy pizzas for the office, right? Good stuff. So, how's this little pointer work? This is tricky. I'm scared to push a button. I don't know. All right, cool. So, <clears throat> B2B storefront, right? That's your Magentos, whatever, whatever you're using for commerce, big commerce, uh-oh. Uh, ERP, this is your ERP on the right-hand side, right, whatever that may be, P21 whatever the case may be, that automation is really important, right, for pushing up product and pricing and all that good stuff. But more importantly, when you get orders, right? So even though in, in the e-procurement space, everything is derived from external applications, it still can be driven through the commerce channel. And this is really becoming even more important for large companies. I was, I was up in uh, Philly talking to one of the largest um, medical device companies in the world, and they want to make sure that they can even get EDI orders back through commerce. EDI has been seen as, as this kind of siloed world, but it's really a commerce. It's really a commerce technology. So you can drive more through commerce. You mentioned, I think, 10% of your business is through commerce. Do you have any EDI? No, it's, but if you did, it probably wouldn't be part of that 10%, right? You wouldn't think about it that way, but it really should be going through commerce. So I need to go direct your ERP. Uh, so who else was doing EDI? Are you guys running that through commerce or just directly to your ERP? Yeah, so you lose some visibility. You don't really know where that's, where that's at. Where you guys are probably all <clears throat> kind of commerce professionals in your organization, you're measured about, you're measured for what you accomplish through commerce, right? You might look at this about trying to receive orders and so forth and transact through commerce rather than directly with your ERP, especially if your commerce component is connected to your ERP. Right, it becomes more modular, right, which is important. Um, so the, the workflow was, is the top left is we started at Coupa. Uh, we clicked on CDW with, through Alexa, right? No, just kidding. Click through CDW, we got authenticated to the store, right? CDW's application was serving up the product and pricing for VCA in that scenario. We added that HP product, right? If we had a question, we could talk to Glenn. That was cool in the live chat. We transferred that cart back over to Coupa on the left-hand side, right? Again, we could go shop for helium, we could do whatever we want, but ultimately, again, submit for, P, uh, for the PO and get approval, and then that PO gets sent back and that completes the status, so it's not an abandoned cart. Maybe it's like a pending cart or something of that nature. Anybody have any questions of this kind of workflow, like will we just step through? Does this make any sense? Does anybody have any advice for me to give anybody some type of elevator speech next time I'm in the elevator? What do you do? I work on a computer. Huh? Make sure it's a tall building. Huh? Sure it's a tall building. Tall building. Yeah, exactly right. If anybody has any advice on that, I'd really love to hear it. All right, so um, what kind of questions do we have? Is, is your mind blown here? Is, uh, you guys feeling all right? So that was, so that was a live demo or screen demo. Yeah. Still logged in and not on, like, 
Yeah. Spam. Yep. Well, again, so only approved oh. vendors are made accessible. I see it at the top right. Yeah. So we're logged in as PO2Go. That's our little acronym. Um, and then we clicked on CDW. In that click, we were, we were kind of through the browser, you know, authenticated in the VCA's B2B account. Right? So there's like a, a handshake between Punch Out to Go and CDW. It says, hey, welcome VCA into your application. Yes, sir. Brady, what, how much, uh, what percentage do you think of B2B commerce is going through e procurement right now and where is that headed? Yeah, I got that data. Uh, actually, I got it right here. I was just looking at the report. It just came out. I think it's uh, 10%. I don't have my phone. So they said, t so this is uh, B2B online. They put out a report. 10% uh, of on, on supplier website growth. Uh, but I think it's 37% it's, it's growth across the e-procurement channel. It's, it's very tricky, right? So, you know, for Granger, it might be 50% of their business. Remember, 50% of companies are using e-procurement systems. They may not be using them well, but it's going to vary. It's going to vary based on, you know, your relationship you have with the customer and, you know, the kind of the, the volume. Right yeah. now, is e, e procurement a, a large percentage of yeah? Let me get the, give me one sec. E commerce. Yep. So this was mapping out the ten million dollar number, and uh, a ten trillion dollar number. I'm sorry. So, and of the ten trillion, em employees on supplier websites again related to B two B, kind of the suppliers, you know, the, the employees of an organization. 954 billion. SaaS e-procurement systems outside of a network, 834 billion. E-procurement of services outside of a network, 185 billion. So it's over a trillion through procurement. The, the weird thing about the report though it is, is that it segments EDI networks, where in essence a lot of these like Ariba's and different platforms are also EDI networks. EDI networks con consisted of 4.7 trillion of the 10 trillion dollar number. And the 218 billion was handled at travel and strip clubs. <laughs> but it's really again gonna vary. Uh, but it, this, this article is actually really well, well done. It's, um, it was on B2B e-commerce world, Digital Commerce 360. They do a good job of covering B2B. Good question, yes sir. If I'm air gas and I want to be part of the VCA, yeah. what's, what does that relationship look like? How, do, how does air gas go about being yeah. one of those logos? Yeah, so they're in a pretty good position because they only really have kind of one competitor, right? So they have the relationship. Uh, this space, again, it's good old boy, good old girl network. It's relationship driven. You have to win the loyalty, the love. When they evaluate your capabilities as, you know, for commerce, right? I think when you, when you start looking at landing larger accounts, you're going to go through this RFP process. It's going to ask you if you're capable of doing these particular types of things, right? So for air gas, they, they already have their relationship, um, but they have to have the relationship. You can't just go at, enter on, into a network, right? You have to have a relationship or find a way to one of those relationships. And they may start through RFPs, right, with organizations or municipality, municipalities um, or organization, you know, like VCAs of the world that you might sell to. And maybe, just maybe, VCA is your customer and maybe only four of the stores somehow are buying through, through you, you know, because they're close by. That becomes a much larger opportunity for you to go to VCA procurement and say, hey, we've been supporting because they're new to e-procurement, right? So we just launched them like six months ago. So there could be orders that are happening outside the procurement channel that they're going to be wanting to rein in, right? But there might be greater opportunities for you to go to procurement of these organizations to not only sell to that subset of locations, but now to a broader network, right? We see that a lot. We see a lot with like promo. We see a lot in, in all industries really, but hopefully that answers your question, sir. Thank you. Any more questions? More questions for Brady? Oh, we've got one in the back. Um, so if I'm an approved vendor for a couple people on Coupa, yeah. how does the pricing work? Because this sure. one gets a different price than that one. Okay, so not my price, not punch out to go pricing, but how does your pricing work? Right, right. Yeah, so remember, so what's your e-commerce application? I'm on B2B seller from P21 right now. Okay, so there, there, there's a handshake that has to happen between the procurement system. So 
again, when we talk about standards, a lot of these systems have unstandardized approaches, but there's some form of relevant data that's happening on click. So when they click to access your store, we might be getting a DUNS number or some type of from or to identity. Like we're gonna be getting some form of information so that your e-commerce application can properly authenticate the user to reflect the correct offering. Every integration. Like back end sort of thing. Yeah, well it's, yeah, it's through the browser, but yeah, but it's posting data. Uh, it's a great question. And, and that's another, another thing too. It's, it's if you do, again, one integration with VCA in, at Coupa, and then now you got Tesla, it's a completely separate engagement. It doesn't matter that you've connected to that Coupa, right? Even though Coupa's a SaaS-based e-procurement system, it's a completely separate engagement. You're now working with Tesla's e-procurement team, and they have their own rules and so forth. But does that answer your question, ma'am? It does. And, and then just to pick up on what somebody else said is, I just go to Coupa, but I, I have to be an approved vendor. Yes. Or can I go out there and like post, here I am, does anybody want to approve me? So what a lot of, I think, if you, on that document there, it talks about maybe a little bit of, uh, of uncovering how your customers like to purchase from their suppliers, right? So if you know, like those co companies that you might be uploading product data to, right, those are your first ones I think you think about going to and saying, hey, what, what procurement system are you guys using? We'd like to move away from this, providing you an Excel sheet and offer our commerce technologies, right? You'll grow sales, which will be good, and it makes it easier for them. Um, it's a tough network, it really is. Again, very much relationship driven. What the CDWs and Grangers do is they go to all the procurement events, right? They have some form of channel manager of e-procurement that is going to these events, establishing their relationships. The guy from Amazon, I think his name is Aloya Day, he's like seven foot nine, he's a really tall dude, right? So he goes to every show and he talks to everybody trying to take your business, right? But they're really just after tail spend. You know what tail spend is? Like the, the small spend? The, the products they, they, that a VCA can't purchase, right, from others, if that makes sense. But it's a tough network, right? And it's not like you, you set it and, and it's all gold, right? It's, it's a, it, it needs strict focus. Um, but these companies that are going to do these types of integrations with you, if you're not getting a, a multitude of orders every day, then there's a problem, right? So it's, it's not going to be... I'm gonna order from you today and maybe I'll order from you next week. You are gonna be an approved vendor if you can make your way to one of these networks, right? If you follow up with us, uh, follow up with me afterwards, uh, I'll, we have some other good content um, with names of e-procurement systems. Um, and, and that becomes a little tricky too. So for instance, like Duke University uses Jagger. But if you ask anybody at Duke how they, you know, wh where they're doing their purchase from, they're gonna say, I use Buy at Duke. Well, what the hell is Buy at Duke? It's the underlying application is, you know, Jack. If you ask anybody at VCA, what do you guys use? Oh, I use Order Right. That's what they've called it. What the heck is Order Right? It's Coupa. Right? But it's, it's sometimes can be a little tricky to navigate. But again, that's why it takes this focus. But don't lose out on this, right? And don't, don't kick yourselves in the butt if you can't make your way immediately. It takes a little time, a little dedication, a little focus, and it will pan out, I promise you. It's the fastest growing channel, B2B. No problem. Any other questions? I think I've over, overstayed my welcome here. No. Oh, we're yanking you off. <laughs> Give it going for Brady.